everybody, Terrible Dactyl here, and welcome back to another episode of Jurassic Plastic. Today, my friend, the Carnegie Collection Baryonyx. This was one of the last Carnegie dinosaurs that I personally bought at a store. Or did I even buy this one online? I honestly don't remember, but I got this when it came out in 1998. And uh, after this, as I've mentioned in some of my other videos on my website, you know, I lost track of Carnegie collecting for quite a number of years. So this guy was kind of the end of the line for me. And I don't really know why. Looking back at him now, I have to say it's, it's one of the nicer of the late 90s, early 2000s Carnegie models. One of the things that differentiates this era of Carnegie models from the older era is the color vinyl. This model is made of a sort of light mint green plastic. It's a hard plastic. It's not super flexible. It's a little bendy just because of the thinness of the um, metatarsals here. And same thing with the hands. But It's only painted on the top with this dark, well, not really dark, sort of Kelly green and light brown stripes and the cream colored claws, white teeth, pink mouth, and black eyes with no detail. So to me, about this time, I noticed that the sculpts were getting, I guess, a little bit more modern which I appreciated as somebody who enjoys scientifically accurate dinosaur models, but not really as somebody who enjoys the charm and, and kind of uh, bulkier, while not totally unrealistic look of the original Carnegie models. I felt that some of the newer ones didn't quite stand beside things like the old, you know, Triceratops, the old T-Rex, um, with the same type of style. I feel that the style of the sculpting was changing a little bit about this time, especially with the theropods. But the one nice thing about the Baryonyx is it does not fall prey to that tripod stance. Not that there's anything wrong with the tripod stance. In fact, I may do a whole video about that at some point. But it does get old when a lot of the Carnegie models uh, started to have very, very similar poses. And I think the Delta Dromius was one of the first that came out alongside this one to have that issue. Uh, but the Baryonyx is in almost a, well, okay, it is in a tripod stance. It's in a tripod with the hand instead of the tail. But it is not depicted as a quadruped like Baryonyx was in the early 90s. And by the late 90s, they understood that it was a relative of Spinosaurus, not kind of its own weird beast in a separate family, possibly related to, you know, the Deinonychosaurs or something. There was even a time in the 80s when they thought that this big claw in the hand might have belonged to the foot, and that this may have been a giant dromaeosaur of some kind, sort of like they would discover with Utah Raptor later. But by this time, it was recognized as a Spinosaurid, as a bipedal theropod, but it seems like they still wanted to pay homage to that classic early 90s, late 80s depiction of Baryonyx sort of as a quadruped. So this pose I like because it is scientifically correct. The hands are not pronated. If you look at this, um, this hand may come across as a little bit pronated until you notice that the elbow is averted a little bit away from the body. The other hand definitely is not pronated. And it's just very subtly touching the ground with that claw, like it's leaning down to uh, maybe catch a fish or eat some of its prey. And it, maybe it was startled by something that's coming uh, out of the bushes or out of the water nearby, maybe a big crocodile, maybe another baryonyx. The tail is swept to the side like it's ready to pounce. Mouth is open. The teeth are individually sculpted to some extent. Although the bottom teeth near the tongue are a little bit more painted on, kind of like the 
old T-Rex model. Um, it's a little bit on the skinny side, especially when compared to the very similarly posed Invicta Baryonyx, which also, if you notice, does not have pronated hands, although it is fully using that wrist, this hand here for support, which probably ended up breaking its wrist to get it flexed that much. This is a definitely quadrupedal, or at least faculatively quadrupedal Baryonyx. But look at the similarity. Very, very similarly posed models here. One thing I like better about the Invicta model is the bulkiness. This is not shrink-wrapped at all. It's got a realistic amount of muscle and soft tissue on it. I feel that some of the later Carnegie sculpts were a little too skinny. Look how skinny that neck is. The ridge on the back just kind of goes down in a triangular shape. Whereas this one has a nice round rib cage. It's nice and bulky. It's nice and well muscled. The base of the tail is nice and hefty. So from that angle, I think the Invicta is definitely a superior model. Although I really like the color on this. I like the more action oriented pose. One thing as a kid playing with this Baryonyx, the Invicta one, that always kind of bothered me is that it can't put the fish down. I feel like if you had a little model of a fish or some other animal that could go under one of these hands, you could you could play with this one uh, a little bit more. So it's a little bit more, um, you know, toyetic. It is definitely a 140 scale model. Um, although... Well, let's see. Compared to the Invicta, it's about the same size. The Invicta is 145. So the Carnegie Baryonyx may actually be slightly on the small side, but of course it doesn't have to be a maximum sized individual. I think 140 is a fair scale for this one. And let's put the Mark's Caveman in there just to show you the size relationship here with a an approximately 140 scaled human or Neanderthal. Is this Neanderthal? Yeah, probably. So there you have it. That is my brief review of the Carnegie Collection 2008 Baryonyx. I think it is a well sculpted little model. Not the best. I do think Invicta did the sculpting better. But. You can still get your money's worth with this one. This is readily available from secondary uh, retailers, like on eBay. You can get it for less than 10 bucks. It's well worth adding to your collection. So keep an eye out for it if you don't already have it. I think, despite its flaws, it's still one of the nicest looking uh, Baryonyx models on the market today, even compared to some of the modern Safari and uh, Bullyland models and things like that. Uh, so keep an eye out for it. Thanks for watching this review. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you want to comment on it, go to the comments. Tell me, you know, what reviews you'd like to see next. I have a bunch of these Carnegie's. I've got different versions of them. If you got one you really want to see coming up, let me know about it. I'll throw together a quick review, a little walk around for you, so you can see it without having to go out of your way to buy it. Or if you're not sure about buying it, you can get an idea of what it looks like from every different angle. I will give you a little bit of scientific perspective on it as well. And be sure to hit that subscribe button, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.